friends we are your hosts raj and aradhna asava bringing you the weekly hunger mitao program on fanasia through this 30 minute show each saturday we share with you updates on food insecurity in the north texas area while providing information on volunteering and food donation opportunities friends through this community led movement the indian american community is unifying its hunger relief efforts to emerge as a big part of the solution to fighting hunger in america thank you for joining us friends through this show we bring you the latest and greatest information about what's happening in the food banking system and how through hunger mitao we are making a difference unified as a community in the spirit of give where you live making a difference today and continue to make a difference for a better future please visit ntfb.org/hungermetao to learn more and join this movement you can be the first to find out about upcoming volunteer shifts food drives and other ways through which you can help the north texas food bank in ensuring that no one in the counties that they serve go hungry join our facebook group at hungermitao_northtexas to hear about the latest and greatest in our show today we will talk about the genesis and evolution of the food bank now arada the reason we are doing that is several people have been curious exactly how does the food banking system works so they wanted to learn more about it so we are dedicating today's show and next week show to kind of demystify the entire food banking system we'll also talk about the evolution of the food bank and the current state of the food bank network and how feeding america network is trying to ensure everyone has access to nutritious food We sure hope you find this information of value. So Anna, here we go. Let us start by sharing with our listeners the genesis of food banks hmm. and how they have evolved over time in America. It's fascinating. Just over 50 years ago, there was no such thing as a food bank. There were soup kitchens, there were food pantries operating on shoestring budgets out of 
faith communities like church basements and community centers. They served as stopgap solutions for people who were hungry and mostly during emergencies. Hmm. Interesting. Most developed countries around the world are still in this stage. In India, for example, this is how charitable food is distributed even today through soup kitchens run at temples, gurudwara, mosques, churches, and other places of worship, dharmshalas, and the like. Very similar, yes. Interestingly, the modern day food bank in America came about in 1967 when a volunteer in a Phoenix area soup kitchen realized that the grocery stores in his community were throwing away pounds upon pounds of food that were perfectly edible yet deemed unfit for sale. John Van Hengel created the nation's first food bank when he secured a warehouse that could store excess food, establishing a gateway to the pantries and soup kitchens that were already in place and could distribute it to the needy. Wow, 1967. Yes. Food banks grew slowly until the 1980s when the Federal Safety Net Program shrank under the Reagan administration. Hmm. At that time, the charitable food system stepped in to address what was expected to be a short-term stopgap measure. This temporary charitable food system soon became the norm and today it has grown into a nationwide network of more than 300 food banks working through tens of thousands of pantries and kitchens which supplies food to hungry people in every county of every state across America. With the nation's poverty rate remaining consistent, hunger has become a standard part of everyday life for millions, formalizing the hub and spoke system of regional food banks connected to local pantries. There's a lot of information there. It is. Yeah. But it's a good thing this is a podcast. People can listen to it again and again. <laughs> right? That's right. And this may be a good time, Raj, for us to cover, you know, we still get asked the question, how yeah. common is hunger in America? Yes. Friends, hunger is a lot more common than many people think. Hmm. About one in five Americans are food insecure, meaning they're not sure where their next meal will come from. More, many of them are children. Yeah. When resources are stretched tight, making ends meet can be a challenge. Families in the United States are being squeezed by high prices on one side and dwindling jobs, disappearing benefits, and a shrinking dollar on the other. Hmm. More and more are turning to a national network of food banks and the free food outlets for help. The USDA, the Department of Agriculture, estimates that food bank networks distribute more than 2.5 billion pounds of food to the hungry each year. That is in a average year. That's right. However, mm -hmm. in fiscal year 2021, 6.6 .6 billion meals, wow. which translates to north of 8 billion pounds of food, was distributed by Feeding America and its network of food banks. That's 200% more. It was the COVID year. Hmm. But what is of concern is that if the economy continues to falter, even that may not be enough. Hmm. Hunger in the United States is at its highest point since 1994, when the USDA started keeping detailed records. So Anna, I mean, these are big numbers. So, we now have an understanding of how the food banking system in America has evolved, the size of hunger being addressed by the food banks, especially accelerated because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned Feeding America. Hmm. So we've been talking about food banks. What is Feeding America? And how does that fit within the food banking system? Good question. Feeding America is headquartered in Chicago. 
It is the largest hunger relief organization in the United States and has 200 member food banks. Mm. So, you know, we talked about 300 food banks in the country. Right. 200 of those are members of Feeding America. Okay. While each food bank is an independent charity and it's run independently, Feeding America secures donations from national food and grocery manufacturers, government, retailers, shippers, packers, growers, and other organizations, and matches excess food with the food banks that need it most. Wow. Feeding America supports member food banks with governance, training, oversight, sharing best practices, and equipment grants to ensure perishable and non-perishable food is handled and stored properly. It's almost like a good housekeeping seal of approval. They kind of set the standards. They do set the standards. Ah, okay. Feeding America also supports programs that prevent food waste mm. and improve food security among the people it serves. It advocates for legislation that protects people from going hungry and it brings attention to the social and systemic barriers that contribute to food insecurity in our nation. So as I understand, Feeding America is like an umbrella organization which consists of 200 plus member food banks, mm -hmm. 21 statewide food bank associations, mm -hmm. and over 60,000 partner agencies, which are like food pantries, etc., and various meal programs helping provide, as we said earlier, a record 6.6 .6 billion meals to tens of millions of people in need in just one year, last year, 2021. Yeah. The network spreads across every zip code in the USA, providing everyone in need access to nutritious food. That's right. Is that the right summarization? Yeah. Ah. Absolutely. Anna, these are definitely large numbers. So to provide 8 billion pounds of food out of that door. Mm -hmm. How large are these food banks and how do they handle all this food? Uh -huh. Getting nourishing, safe food for people facing hunger requires a robust infrastructure and a high degree of coordination. Hmm. You can do this out of a basement of a faith organization. Or a parking lot. Or a parking lot mm -hmm. because you have to keep the food safe. Correct. But food banks in the US are very diverse from small operations serving people spread out across large rural areas to very large facilities that store and distribute many millions of pounds of food each year and everything in between. Hmm. A variety of factors impact how food banks work from the size of the facility to the number of staff members. But one thing all food banks have in common is that they rely on donors and volunteers to carry out their day-to-day -day operations. Wow. So we spoke about food banks, Feeding America, and now you just mentioned something new for me, food pantries and food agencies. And as we said earlier, in staggering number, 60,000 plus food pantries that ensure nutritious food is accessible to those in need. Yeah. Can you give a little bit more color on that? The food pantry or agency functions as the arms that reach out to that community directly. Hmm. You know, Raj, one of the leading causes of food insecurity is lack of access. Some people live in neighborhoods without grocery stores. Others may have limited mobility or limited access to transportation. The pantries make sure people can get the food they need as close to home as possible. So although local charities like faith-based mission and soup kitchens sometimes receive donations directly from private citizens or businesses, they often turn to food banks as their primary source for staple nutritious food. Ah. You know, in the past, we've talked about uh, a food bank being a wholesale uh, yep. setup mm. and these pantries being the retail Correct. Um, organizations. And I believe uh, the food bank uses the term clients for people who actually come to get the food. 
Correct. Right? So the pantries are the ones who deal with the clients. Exactly. So these member organizations, these pantries, are required to meet specific criteria to become eligible to receive food from food banks. Not just anybody can go out and set up a pantry. Yeah. They must prove that they provide meals or food free of charge at their facilities, maintain an ongoing feeding program, and meet state and federal tax or nonprofit guidelines. Absolutely. Member organizations that qualify as a food pantry may include faith-based groups like missions, churches, mosques, temples, synagogues, soup kitchens, group homes, homeless shelters, daycare programs, senior care centers, emergency canteens, meal services to the housebound, job placement facilities, schools, etc. Yeah. So all of these can possibly set up a food pantry within their facilities and make it accessible to those in need in that area. Yeah. Member organizations don't pay for food, but they are usually responsible for some sort of processing, handling, or maintenance fee that constitute a small portion of the cost of the goods they receive from the food bank. Mm -hmm. This fee varies from region to region and from one food bank to another. That's and I right. believe in pandemic time, yeah. that fee was also waived. Many food banks did that because they wanted to remove all barriers uh, for pantries to be able to get the food uh, to get the needy. Food. Yes. Yeah. So Raj, let's talk about the most important part of food banks, which is food. <laughs> exactly what kind of food do the food banks provide and where do they get this food from? <clears throat> so listeners, what started with distribution of salvaged food and canned products has now become a transformed industry. One of the primary goals of Feeding America is to provide access to healthy food in all communities served. This means food banks supply pantries with more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low fat dairy, and lean proteins. In fact, 71% of the food received by the Feeding America network could fall into one of these categories. That is fascinating. Yeah, so the focus is on providing healthy foods. Mm. And most food banks purchase food to balance out the nutrition content. If they are lacking a protein, protein or right. produce, mm -hmm. they'll have to go out and buy it. Food banks today are also at a crossroads as they reconcile the ongoing need to serve a hungry populace against the growing recognition that the root causes of hunger, including poverty and inequality, also need to be addressed. That's right. Their mission has become both practical and theoretical as they strive every day to feed the hungry while also trying to figure out and solve the why of hunger. That's right. Feed the line. Shorten the line. Shorten the line. Yep. Yeah. And as for where do food banks get the food which they help bring to the American tables? It's my understanding that they get it from three main sources. Mm -hmm. Donated food, mm -hmm. purchased food, and food received through federal program. Yep. So let us give a little color on all three. Donated food. Most of the food that reaches struggling families is donated to food banks by people like you and me, friends, businesses, and farmers. And they do that through food drives, which is an essential source of high quality, shelf-stable items. Food drives provide flexibility to food banks. The food received can be distributed immediately or stored until needed. Food drives can be started by individuals, families, church groups, companies, businesses, and more. So the food banks depend a lot on food drives. Farmers. Many food banks have relationships with local farmers, from small urban gardens to sprawling rural op operations, which donate a portion of their crop to the food bank. These donations help food banks provide healthy food to our neighbors who may not otherwise have access to fresh produce. Companies and local businesses. 
Large and small food businesses, restaurants and bakeries donate food to food banks. These donations can be big, a truckload of milk or smaller, a few boxes of extra bread from a local bakery. Donations from these groups include everything from, as I said, dairy products to canned goods to meat products. Last year, nearly 2.4 billion meals were donated to the Feeding America network from people, businesses that I just mentioned to you. Now let's talk about food purchased by food banks. Sometimes food banks may purchase the items their neighbors need but items that are not donated regularly, mm -hmm. such as fresh produce and dairy. Food banks often buy this food at much lower prices than what we spend at the grocery store because they're buying in bulk. Right. So donated dollars can turn into more meals. Purchasing also means food banks can be flexible to address specific needs in their community, like culturally or medically specific diets. Uh, one thing to note here, Raj, is that with inflation, the food bank is spending more and more money right. to purchase the same amount of and food. And getting lesser and lesser food. That's yes, right. That is so true. Yeah. And friends, finally, a large part of the food received by the food bank come from federal programs. The United States Department of Agriculture provides billions of meals to our neighbors facing hunger each year. The USDA purchases food from farmers and delivers the food to food banks for distribution in their communities through the pantry system. The USDA's program are among the most reliable food sources for food banks, providing two and a half billion meals last year. Friends, over the decades, these food banks have become not just storehouses for food, but also resource centers for all things related to hunger. Food banks work with their pantries to educate, advocate, and sponsor anti-hunger legislation. They help with job training, with healthcare, with nutrition education, legal services, tax help, and much more. Above all, food banks are businesses engaged in the all important work of sourcing food raising funds and corralling volunteers while addressing day-to-day -day issues like transportation, storage, logistics, food safety, and governance. Food banks also provide an efficient way for the government to distribute federal benefits like food, bo food boxes for seniors and help people who qualify to sign on to the federal benefits like SNAP, WIC, etc. Wow. What an episode. Friends, in today's episode, you got a good understanding about the genesis, evolution, and the structure of the food banking system in America. And how sorely this is needed in today's time. Everywhere in the world. Yeah. In our next episode, we'll take a deeper look at how food banks operate, some of the major food programs they have in place, volunteering at the food bank, and share ways you can help to make mealtime a certainty for children, seniors, and families who need a helping hand. Our mission, friends, is Hunger Mittau. And Hunger Mittau is as much about eradicating hunger as it is about unifying the fragmented efforts of our community and focusing it on the humanitarian cause of hunger. Let us come together as the entire Indian American community and show how we engage in any place we call home. We are smart, compassionate change agents who give where we live, so our community benefits from our presence. And until next week, friends, remember, we may never be able to eradicate hunger, but we sure can ensure no one goes hungry. Hunger Mittau. Hunger Mittau. चल के तुझे मैं
दे के चलू एक ऐसे गगन के तले जहा हम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले आ चल के तुझे मैं ले के चलू एक ऐसे गगन के तले जहा हम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले एक ऐसे गगन के तले